Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I'm going to be talking about the end of my little David Mitchell experiment of reading all of his interconnected works, the pros and cons that created for my overall reading experience, and maybe suggesting a reading order or groupings of books depending on what you might be interested in the Mitchell verse. If you've been watching my videos, you'll see that my trajectory is weird, basically. I started in the middle and then progressed till almost the end, then regressed to the beginning and then went to the very last book. I went from the Thousand Autumns of Jakob de Zoot to the Bone Clocks to Slade House and then I went backwards. I went to Black Swan Green and then I went to Number Nine Dream, Ghost Written, his very first work, and then to Utopia Avenue, the very last published book. Uh, this was really interesting and I actually really like the trajectory for the most part and I would recommend it with a caveat that Black Swan Green being a little bit more tangential to the meta components and having the least connective tissue to most of the things going on other than Number Nine Dream, I think that I would reorder things a little bit differently. I'll talk about that in a bit. but. The really interesting thing about my reading experience is that the Bone Clocks introduced a very nice meta component. Uh, it was the primary thing that I was most interested in in reading the connective tissue. I knew that there was a overlaying, overarching story that was happening in sort of like the background of all these books. I didn't know to what degree and I wanted to know what was happening and if it would sort of recharacterize my experiences with Cloud Atlas, which for the most part it didn't, um, but it did give me some satisfaction with seeing how the different parts of the Mitchellverse fit into Cloud Atlas. So it was still a very interesting experience that did alter the way that I looked at all of the books but not specifically um, because of the meta stuff. When I consumed the meta component and then went on to Slade House, which was a nice coda to it, and saw how it interacted with the Thousand Autumns ending, it was really interesting and it raised a couple specific questions about the meta story that was answered in Ghostwritten, which you would think would be a little bit annoying for me, but the two books in between kind of created a nice sense of anticipation for me. I wasn't sure if these things would ever be answered either. It was just a question that I had in my mind. Maybe Utopia Avenue coming after them would answer it, but it turned out that I got a lot more than what I was expecting from Ghostwritten from a very specific chapter about the uh, meta components. And it was um, sort of like a southpaw sidewinder because the story doesn't telegraph that it will be about that very much. It somewhat foreshadows it in the beginning um, if you're paying attention, but mostly it intercepts the meta component and then relays it to the reader and then continues on. It's not, it is somewhat integral to the ghost written story overall. But I think the most interesting aspects of Ghost Written are not to do with the meta component that it has in it. Um, so it was like a very serendipitous way of consuming that portion of the book because it meant a lot more to me having consumed the stuff in the middle with the bone clocks especially. And then surprisingly, the components that were in Ghost Written are super pertinent to Utopia Avenue, which I hadn't expected and really enjoyed. Everything to do with the meta aspect of Mitchell verse is uh, to do with ghost written and by proxy, I guess some of the stuff is in number nine in one specific chapter that is, I would say tangential and not required to figure out that specific aspect uh, or character and um, also in the Bone Clocks. So one thing I will say though is that it is pretty important 
to make sure that you read the Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoot before the Bone Clocks and before Utopia Avenue especially. There's some pretty heavy spoilers and the progression of the plot, though it wouldn't line up particularly linearly, if I'm thinking, yeah, it would mostly be, chronologically speaking, Utopia Avenue taking place before the Bone Clocks, I think, for some aspects anyway. But the Bone Clocks have chapters that moves beyond it as well, so it's hard to say. Uh, either way, I would definitely consume it first. There's a lot of throwbacks and connections to the Thousand Autumns that are surprising and recharacterize or contextualize the ending especially, uh, sometimes multiple times. <laughs> so it's that part is very cool. What my final reading order I think would look like would be um, I would start with Thousand Autumns the Bone Clocks, Slade House, then I think that I would read Cloud Atlas, and then I would read um, Ghost Written, Utopia Avenue, and then I would read uh, the Number Nine Dream, and probably Black Swan Green last, because it is tangential. Or I would start with Black Swan Green in the very beginning, and then start the Mitchell verse off like that. Um, either way, I think it would be best put on the peripheral. It does make it fade into the background for me, even though I had read it you know, middle of the roadish, but it sort of wants to be there. It is straight up historical fiction, coming of age, literary fiction. So it isn't playing around with like, different genres, chapters, and voices. It's one narrator. It's a very specific story. It doesn't tie too much into the other stories. The connective tissue are peripheral characters who appear in other stories uh, that are completely tangential as far as I'm concerned, and nice little Easter eggs that you see, but they're, they're not quite important. Either putting it first or last, whatever you wanted, I think that would be pretty nice. And then number nine, Dream, being last I think is nice because you have a whole bunch of time at the end you're not spurred to read another book you can take your time with it and it is pretty high cognitive load and um, the sort of least uh, accessible book from Mitchell I would say in terms of recommending you pairs of books or uh, something outside of the trajectory that I have just explained uh, I would suggest that if you're very new to David Mitchell and you want to just see what he's about, you could start with Cloud Atlas because it shows his, a range of his voice and his um, ability to capture genre. It's Each story is a different genre, uh, ranging from noir to cyberpunk to historical fiction to a, a whole bunch of different things. It ties into other books so tangentially that if you were to pick up other books later you wouldn't be hindered by it and if it's the only thing from David Mitchell that you read it's probably still his strongest outing. It's the only book that I rated five stars however most of his other books I rated four stars. Number Nine Dream is probably the weakest in my mind but that's just because I'm not into what he was doing there. It's like a sci-fi pastiche where it's humorous and gonzo and doing a little bit of commentary on society and coming of age but in a very um mirakami surrealistic type of way which for me is just fine it's not you know my bread and butter I, i'm not super interested in that uh fiction wise also, if you don't care about that and you just want to see sort of his literary chops, you could just pick up Black Swan Green and read it straight. It's coming of age, literary fiction. You would see kind of what his strengths are. I think later on in his books, he's a much stronger writer, but his, I think Black Swan Green could be like a, 
his own challenge to himself after he did number nine dream in a coming of age way that was very different to see if he could just do a straight up story because most people were referring to him as a sort of one trick pony where he's doing the novellas that stack onto each other and have a meta context. If you wanted to read a trajectory of just his meta component stuff, then if you don't care about historical fiction in Japan, you could probably discard the Thousand Autumns. I would go with reading uh, The Bone Clocks and Slade House as a small little coda. It's a short book to it if you're really interested in the meta components and you would probably be fine. It, uh, The Bone Clocks ties in chronologically with Cloud Atlas in some interesting ways in that the second to last chapter in which Zachary is discussing in the future the way the world has changed and a futuristic group um, visits him called the Prescience, I think. The last chapter in the Bone Clocks is sort of between that and shows who the Prescience are uh, in a not very myopic way, but it does explain it in a short context. And that was really interesting. If you're very into the appearance of the characters uh, connective tissue making reprising roles or cameos in different books, I would recommend reading Cloud Atlas, The Bone Clocks, and Utopia Avenue. I think those would give you the most satisfaction and bang for your buck. I'm going to continue this series. If David Mitchell puts out another book, I'll do a step nine and then recontextualize as needed. Uh, that way I kind of have my thoughts codified on each book in these videos and as more people discover the videos and, and maybe want more information then I'll still be around and be able to um, fill you in if needed. So this will be a nice little time capsule thing I'm thinking for whenever the next book comes out. It should be um, easier for me to remember everything. And hopefully if you're like me and learned that all of the David Mitchell books are having connective tissue in a meta story and you want to know where to start, hopefully this video helps you as well as the previous ones on each specific book. Each video goes into how it has connective tissue with other books as far as I knew at the time and uh, that way you can tell maybe if the book is interesting to you, depending on where you're coming from and what you want to get out of reading all of them. If you have any thoughts, opinions, or questions that I hadn't think thought of, like if you're interested in a very specific genre, or if you have a very specific question about a particular book in the series that I haven't covered here, hit me in the comments and I will, as best as I can, answer them, and otherwise I will See you next video. Bye.